Hey everyone, so springtime is lake fishing season in British Columbia and uh, we're fishing at Onion Lake again in Rolex Ranch. Um, we were here last year and for three days and we caught quite a few fish um, by simply fishing with indicators and but towards the end of the last trip we were fishing by stripping flies as well and also caught a few fish but we, we ran, a, ran out of time at the end so this year we're coming back we're gonna do more of that and see if we can get bigger fish. If you ever fish in lakes around British Columbia, you know that most of the lakes are public and you can simply access all of the lakes um, with a fishing license. Onion Lake is actually a private lake, it's privately owned, so you actually have to pay to come in here, book a place, um, pay to come in here to fish. So you're basically uh, paying for comfort. You might ask, well, what would you pay if you can access all the other lakes to fish? Uh, well, you're basically paying so that you can avoid the crowd, um, you, you don't have to stress about getting a campsite when you get there and things like that. Um, you can, if you have a group of people, if you have families, you can book the entire lake to yourself for the weekend and uh, don't have to worry about people coming and fish with you. Uh, the lakes come with uh, boats as well, so all the boats with anchors are available. You just have to bring your camping gear, fishing rods, or if you want to stay at the ranch, um, you don't have to bring anything, just bring your food along. Um, if you if your families don't like to the fish, there are lots of other stuff to do as well. Um, you can walk around the lake. There's tons of different wildlife you can see around here. Just driving up here, we saw deer. Occasionally, you see the odd bears around. And uh, if you like birds, there are lots of birds around. Like, I like taking photos of birds. And you see all kinds of different birds that you wouldn't see down in the city. Uh, so, as I said earlier, uh, there's rainbow trout in here. Um, there's, uh, we're basically fishing by stripping flies today. Um, the flies that we're using are pretty simple. I'm not really a fly fisherman uh, that much. I, I fish with all different kinds of methods, so I don't tie flies um, that very, very often and not very good a lot. So basically I'm just using tiny little leeches. And um, the technique is pretty simple. I just cast and retrieve. So you cast the sink a little bit and retrieving flies slowly by stripping. And there's two different setups that we use and we'll show you right now what they are. So two different rods, uh, well the rods are the same, they're both five weight rods. Um, so the, the way fly fishing rods work is that you go from one weight up to you know over ten weights. Um, the higher the number is, the, the bigger fish you want to target. On those. So five weight is generally what you use for trout in BC and so these five weight rods uh, match with two reels. So these are Islander LX 3.4 reels that are matched with the five weight rods. Um, so if you're not sure what size of rods, uh, the reels that you should use, you should definitely ask your tackle store and they'll point out which one you should use. You should use one that's enough to hold a uh, five weight fishing line. So you got five weight fishing line to go with the five weight rods. Two different lines that we're using today. Um, so this is a floating line which means the line actually floats on top of the water. Uh, this is a clear intermediate sink. You look at the fly line, it's actually clear. And it actually sinks, I don't know how, exactly how fast it sinks, maybe I think it's a couple inches per second. So it slowly sinks down. And so this line, it's better for if you're fishing in water between 10 and 15 feet deep. Whereas the floating line is more for shallower water. You don't want that line to sink. So you're only fishing uh, right below the surface. The, the lake itself, it's not very deep. It's between 10, 15 feet. The deepest part is about 20 feet. The area that we're fishing on the far side of the lake is only about five feet deep. So a lot of times I, I'll stick with the floating line. If I start fishing deeper water, I'll switch to the in intermediate clear uh, sink line. This is actually our last day um, of our trip. We've been here for two days now. Yesterday, I've actually caught my biggest trout ever in, uh, in lake fishing. Uh, the fish, uh, we weighted with the net, is about 7 pounds. The net itself is about just over 1 pound, so the fish is around 6 pounds. Uh, so that, that fish was just really big. I was, I was really excited. Um, we're having a late start. It's about 11 o'clock now. Um, usually I'm not a morning person. My friends are already out there. They've been out there fishing for a couple of hours. Lake fishing is great for people who don't like to fish early in the morning because the fishing usually turns on um, later in the morning or early afternoon. Yesterday, the fishing didn't start until about 2 or 3 o'clock. So hopefully 
by the time we get out there, the fish will bite him. So I'm going to get a boat ready and we'll head out and see what happens. So the weather is actually colder than yesterday. And yesterday was already cold, but today is even colder. And uh, when it's cold like this, you just don't get a whole lot of fish coming up to the surface. It's hard to believe that we're in the first week of June and uh, the temperature is still hovering around the low teens. But hopefully it'll pick up a little bit. We see a bit of clearing behind us and we'll get some insect activities going on and maybe we'll get some fish rising, some bigger fish rising later on. If you look around me, there's actually tons of branches um, sticking out uh, from the water. It's like a jungle here. It's, uh, it's, when you're fishing about in five feet of water, well, it's probably deeper than five feet, but it's uh, from the surface to the weed bed, it's probably about five feet. And this is where we're getting all the fish yesterday. And it's hard. It's hard to say what the fish actually do, right? Right behind us, it gets deeper. So maybe the fish are in deeper water, they actually just cruise right in to the shallower water and feed when there's actually food around. But there's not much right now. We've got a bit of wind blowing right now. It's cold and haven't seen many fish rising. That is probably the smallest, smallest fish in the whole lake. Take a look at this. We're going for six pounders and what do we catch? Six grams. <laughs> six grams of fish. Ah, six ounce. <laughs> A little bigger. Oh. Let go. So in a lake like this, you have different ear classes of trout because um, they do spawn. And uh, so of course, every year you're gonna get a recruitment of um, trout population. Uh, that one there is probably one year old. Or maybe just, yeah, just around one year old. And uh, the one, the bigger fish we got yesterday, probably like three, four year olds. And so, as of course, the the older the fish is, the the bigger the fish will be, right? Um, and of course, the there's always a higher density of younger fish and bigger fish, so that's why the bigger fish are so much harder to catch. And they're also smarter, I mean, they don't get big for no reason, right? So we're actually just casting right next to all these branches, not right into the branches because then you're gonna lose your fly, but right next to it because a lot of times, you know, there'll be dancers climbing up the branches and, oh, miss one, ah, talking away and miss one. Um, the, the, when the insect catch, they, they climb over the branches and then they're following and of course, what's gonna happen? The trout's gonna come uh, to the area and feed on all those insects falling into the water, right? Um, yeah, that feel like a stronger tap. That's the biggest fish of the whole lake. Oh. Well, that's the risk you take when you're fishing around snacks. Damn it, I don't want to lose that fly. Let's go chase it down. I don't want to lose it because I only have a few left. And what if they start fighting and it's gonna run out of flies? Well, I got the fly back, but now we're like stuck in the jungle. So if you look, look around me, it's just lots of branches. Take a look. And I gotta watch out my electric motor, make sure it doesn't get stuck on the branches. It's very, very shallow here. Okay, so we, we got out of the jungle over there and right off that there's a big fish just jumped right behind me. So I'm heading back out that way and 
going to anchor and see if we can get it. This is actually the same spot where I got that big one yesterday. But it's very, very snaggy though. That big fish I got yesterday actually got caught up in the snack. But luckily, he actually got out by himself. Let's give it a go. Lines are tangled. It's probably not there anymore. It's probably over there now. There it is, there it is, there it is. Yo, that's the... That's feeling yesterday. Good? Yeah. Oh. Oh, up it goes. I gotta try to keep it away from that stick over there. Another hot take. Oh, this is gonna be interesting. <laughs> oh, jeez. Watch your anchor. Oh, crap. Oh, jeez. Watch your anchor. Watch your anchor. Oh, come on. Yeah. Coming right back. Oh. 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 <laughs> oh. That's hard work. All right. Now it's going again. Oh jeez. That is a big fish. <laughs> okay, now the next challenge is how are we gonna net that fish? Oh crap. Oh shit. Oh the snack, the snack, the snack. Oh no, did it get caught up in the snack? Oh, he did. Oh, is it out? Oh. Uh oh. Oh, well, I guess. <laughs> oh crap! <laughs> it's in the snack. <laughs> Oh, 
Or else maybe we just have to wait it out and see see if we'll come out again. Winning the snack. <sighs> That's even bigger than yesterday. It's longer. I was worried about nading the fish, but wasn't thinking there's a big snack over there. It's a big piece of logs sitting under the water. And yesterday I actually cooked that same log and... Oh crap. I don't know how we're going to get this out. I'm not even sure if the fish is still on. I think it's still on. Actually, I don't know. <laughs> huh? I'm not even sure if the fish is still on. I don't think the fish is on anymore, to be honest. Oh, it's too bad. No, I think that fish is gone. Alright, I think that fish is gone. Oh, well, that was that. That was my biggest one so far. And it went actually went under these this log right behind us because we just came over to grab grab the line because it's still hung up i think what happened was it went under the log and then it broke off the fly and the line just got tangled around the log and i couldn't get it out and whatever <laughs> we'll get another one <laughs> yeah so like i said we came out this way and french fins anchored right behind us and i just heard a really big splash right right behind him like geez that's a really big fish and two casts later, they just grab it really hard and just start running and... Oh well. But it's really hard to land fish here. Like I said, look, look at the branches behind us and it, it could have gone anywhere, right? And and could have gone right into the to the snacks. And I thought it was going, going to go into low snacks behind us over here. Like clear lows for quite a while and then I would start worrying about netting the fish and let my guard down. And then it took me up by surprise, just went under the yellow log that I didn't see. Oh well. We'll try again. Oh, there's one. That's pretty nice too, actually. Yeah, not bad. Not as big as that other one I lost, but I'll take it. Ah, oh, come on, line. Oh, 
I know the place. Oh, it's not bad. Net. <laughs> Nice fish. Constellation prize. Yeah, it's actually not bad. See? Not a bad fish. I don't know. Uh, I don't know how big it is. A couple pounds maybe? Maybe a little bigger? Oh, let's go. Oh. Finally a fish landed today. Hey everyone, so we hope that you have enjoyed this video feature and for more information on fishing at Rodex Ranch, please click on the top left video. And for more information on the gear that we use in this video, please click on the top right video. And if you need more information on fishing in British Columbia, please go to our website at fishingwithrod.com. Make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel. Until next time, good luck fishing.